your only warning. So I am putting on my apron, not because we are cooking anything, although I do have some, uh, Debbie, I've got some taco soup going in the can cooker. So this is my first time cooking it in the can cooker. I've made it on top of the stove many, 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 many times. Um, but I thought I would try the can cooker because it's a little, you know, it's a, a pressure cooker just to see how that works in case we need to take that camping um, soon, you know, just to see if taco soup is an option. Okay, so this is it. This is your last warning. Um, if you are squeamish and don't want to hear about um, injuries, about kitchen injuries, then you might want to take a break right now. This part will only last maybe five or six minutes. Um, and then I will give you two thumbs ups when we come back to um, just talk about kitchen safety. But if you're squeamish at all, now's your chance. So now is your only opportunity to mute me. So go ahead. And I noticed that Deanna is not here. I think she's just avoiding it altogether just to be safe. Okay. So this is the second half of chat number 297. We are here in my loft. Some of you remember um, the campers in the, let's see, what have I already got out? I have my Christmas campers are out, my truck, the Christmas tree, some of my gnomes, some of my Christmas goodies. And um, that's all the Christmas decorating that I have done so far. <clears throat> we have been decorating at Casey Kitchen Center, but that's all I've gotten done here so far. Um, I am recording this on the Mevo camera. The loft, our building has such thick walls that the Mevo does not like it. So we are doing this up close and personal for the first time in a long time um, on my phone, on Facebook Live. If you're watching this later on YouTube, I'm sorry I've looked down so much. I apologize. Um, that was just out of habit, out of old habit. Um, but you can watch this later on youtube.com, search at, if you have an egg, and you should go right to it. So, that was it. That was your, your pre-warning for the second half of chat number 297. We are officially getting ready to talk about um, safety in the kitchen. So, y'all already know, if you've been here for very long, that three weeks ago, I had, a, I had an accident in the kitchen, um, and it was a silly accident. So, um... Those of you who don't want to hear about this and don't want to hear the gory details, again, go ahead and mute me or go do something else for a few minutes, and I'll give you two thumbs ups when it's time to come back. Um, <clears throat> but three weeks ago, I ignored an extensive safety discussion given to me by some very dear friends who let me borrow their mandolin. And I have since also found out that mandolin, the veg vegetable slicer, is spelled with an E on the end, and mandolin, the instrument, is spelled without an E on the end. So this was the mandolin with the E on the end, a vegetable slicer. Um, they gave me an extensive, sa extensive safety discussion, and they made sure that I had all the safety equipment, and then it was followed by a 10-minute cross your heart and pinky promise that you'll use them packed, okay? Well, a careless moment, and a few hours later, I can no, no longer pinky promise with that hand. So my finger is looking much, much better, but I don't know if you can tell, but it is no longer round. So my pinky, hello, Julie. Okay, Julie, so I already gave the warning about the squeamish part. So if you're squeamish and don't wanna hear about bodily injuries, just mute me for a couple of minutes, and then I'm gonna give two thumbs ups when it's okay to come back in. <clears throat> but anyway, I think my pinky is looking fantastic. But if you'll notice, see like my other pinky, round, not round. So, yeah, so that was a silly, you know, silly, unnecessary accident later. Um, my pinky is no longer round. I, I think it'll fluff back out there. I think we'll be okay. So I wanted to let you know, though, I decided we needed to have a safety in the kitchen chat today just to go over some things because that was silly, okay? It was silly on my part. So the kitchen is a dangerous place. We're all in it a lot, but it is a dangerous place, and we need to chat about how to keep you and obviously me safe and shortly after I announced my accident, I heard from so many of you that I decided that we needed this chat. Um, so I already showed you, I sliced off the side of my pinky and I was literally a fingernail away from losing the entire end of my finger with that mandolin. Okay, um, yeah, Trish said her son, um, he lost the whole top half of his finger. What was, he, was he using a mandolin or what was he using, Trish? So my pinky, when I went to check this, my fingernail kind of deflected it and that's why it went down the side of my pinky. Um, otherwise, where it had started to cut, uh, yeah, okay, Mary did the same thing. Sorry, <clears throat> Mary did the same thing with a meat saucer and she says it will fatten back out. Okay, awesome. 
So, but it literally, my fingernail kept it from taking off this part of my finger. Um, my friend Sherry, my friend Sherry um, opened a can of soup this week and she was pushing it down on the lid, wound up in the emergency room with five stitches in her thumb. Okay. Yeah, just from a, opening a can, opening a can of soup. Valerie took off the tip of her pinky not once, but twice with a mandolin. Gail has a couple of odd shaped fingers thanks to her mandolin. Paula lost her nails, but luckily no fingers. So only nails were lost. And of course, then she had to throw away what she was making after sticking her hand into a Vitamix blender to encourage some kale to go on down. Patricia grated off part of her thumb on her box grater, like on a cheese box grater. So I don't think she has a thumbprint anymore on that hand from where, you know, from where she grated that off. And then our neighbor, Jackie, here in the lofts went to culinary school. And the day after this happened, when I came home all bandaged up and everything, she regaled John for 30 minutes about missing fingertips, you know, fingertips that are missing, lacerated hands, missing fingerprints, burns, stitches, and more at culinary school. And they're professionals. So trust me, we need this chat, okay? So we definitely needed this chat. Okay. Let me take one more drink, and then it's almost time. I promised you I would not take very long on the gory part of it. Okay, so it is two thumbs ups time. So for those of you who muted me, or have gone off to do something else, or who did not want to hear about all the gory accidents, you know, or whatever, um, it's two thumbs ups time. So it is safe for you all to come back in. Um, we are done talking about bodily harm. We're done talking about... Um, that in our discussion so it is officially safe for you all to come back in and we can go um we can we can go on to talking about how to keep yourself safe in the kitchen so it is okay oh my gosh anna i just said it was safe but anna so i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say out loud what you just typed but that was one of the things that i found when i was searching you know for topics for things to talk about you know during tonight's chat anyway it is two thumbs ups for those of you who, who muted me and who would like to come back in and join our discussion. And I kept it to seven minutes, so that's pretty good. I had said five to 10. Okay, so I used to help, I used to lead or help lead all of our OSHA safety training um, meetings for a, for a small international company. And we did a lot of shipping and receiving, for, using forklifts and things like that. And then I continued that on with um, mine and John's two businesses. Um, and do you know what the top three reasons are for injuries? What my top reasons were that I found for, for, for people getting injured. Um, these are my top three, and you may be surprised what they are. Absolutely number one. Absolute number one reason that, um, that, people, that I, I believe that people get injured um, is complacency. So it doesn't matter how educated you are if, if you are becoming complacent about something that you were doing, you, you can get hurt. So thinking things like, oh, I got this. You know, I do this every day. This is my job. I do this every single day or I'm too smart to get hurt. Okay, that doesn't fly. So that one don't fly. Okay, impatience. Number two is impatience. Being too busy, too rushed, not taking enough time to do it right or safely. Um, I found that to be the number two reason that people get injured. Um, and then number three is not using your tools. So most things come with warning labels and some of the warning labels we laugh and think that they are ridiculous, but they are there for a reason because someone needed them. Um, so using our tools like warning labels, safety equipment, things, some things come with um, safety equipment instructions, but do we read them or use them? No. So yeah, <clears throat> so no. Those are my top three, top three reasons that I found that people get injured. So here are some safety, here are some safety warnings and tips that I found without even looking very hard. Um, obviously all of the safety training that I did in a past life all had to do with forklifts and chemicals and slips and falls and, you know, um, uh, motorized equipment, you know, things like that. Um, but those are my top, the top three things that I found, top three reasons I found, you know, that people were getting, um, you know, were getting injured. Yeah, and Anita says, I'm always rushing to get dinner done, so she has to make herself slow down. That's exactly right. So these are, these are the safety tips that I found without even looking really hard. Um, so let's avoid my top three and take just a few minutes to chat about this, okay? 
So safety tip number one that I found was, and it makes sense now that I see it, a dull knife is more dangerous than a sharp one. So I believe, oh my goodness, hold on. Kathy says impatience and not putting away extension cords, tripping on it and falling. Yeah, that would be bad. That is, that would be bad, Kathy. Um, but so the number one thing I found was um, people using dull knives either improperly or not having respect for them because, you know, they're dull and you think, oh, they're, you know, they're not going to cut me. So if your knife is dull, you tend to apply more pressure. Um, and I know in my case, if the, if the knife is dull, I am so guilty of this, of holding whatever it is in my hand, like an avocado or something like that, holding it in my hand and cutting it because I think, oh, this knife is so dull. Um, very, very highly likely, um, you know, reason or way to get, to get injured um, is using a dull knife rather than a sharp one. So I think a sharp knife, we have a little bit, I'm not saying you can't cut yourself with a sharp knife, but I think we have a little more respect for it just because you know it's super sharp. Um, but yeah, dull one, been there, been there, done that. Um, <coughs> oh my goodness, Loretta says her electric knife was smoking and she will never use one again. Smoking like it was gonna catch on fire? Is that what you're saying? Cause that's terrifying. Okay, safety tip number two. So with items like mandolins becoming more popular um, in the home kitchen, the New York Times reports that a mandolin slicer, immersion blenders, meat grinders, and food processors are just a few of the gadgets that are causing more frequent trips to the emergency room for people who rush things in the kitchen or who don't know how to handle the devices properly. Um, on the If You Have an Egg blog, the one that you can print out, Jessica is going to post the link to that New York Times article. It was really good. Um, I do suggest that you go back and read it because it had a lot of good information. But safety tip number two was all over this complacency. It's my kitchen. What, you know, I'm, compl I'm not intentionally being complacent, but I'm complacent. What, I'm in my kitchen every day. How could I get hurt? impatience, trying to hurry through the process. That's what happened to me. I was trying to hurry and figure out how to use this thing without using all the safety equipment um, and not using your tools. So getting new tools and not, not understanding how to use them, not reading the instructions, things like that. So that's number two is new, newer, more frequently in your home tools, you know, like mandolins, immersion blenders, meat grinders, and food processors. That's there that has jumped to the top of the emergency, you know, room list. And I actually looked up um, top, I think it was top six reasons, maybe it was top eight reasons people go to the emergency room. And number five, I think number five was a heart attack. Number six was a mandolin slicer. So just saying. Okay, safety tip number three. <clears throat> if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, literally. Um, some top ways that injury from heat can be avoided, and I just saw a couple of steam burns, you know, things like that. Um, one is to talk, turn pot and pan handles away from the front of the stove, so that way little ones and you can't get burned by accidentally turning over something that is, you know, boiling or something that's really hot. So, this is an example. This handle is still, this handle is still pretty hot, um, so it is turned away. <clears throat> it is turned away from the front of the stove. If I had this like that, I would be much more likely to hit that and flip it over on myself. And if I had little ones here, if they reached up, you notice I had to put on a mitt to touch that. That thing is, the handle is still so hot that if they, if I had it turned around and they reached up, that would be a burned hand um, for sure. So turning the pot and pan handles away from the front of the stove from, yeah, so that, so that you and little ones don't don't accidentally turn over a boiling pot or touch a, a hot handle. Um, making sure that your air fryer or other heated gadgets have all of their parts, especially the locking devices to keep them from coming apart when pulling out hot food. So in the air fryer, there is a little, mine has a little button right here, my newer one, and I know you can't see this, but mine has a little button right here that separates the tray, the pan from the bottom my newer one, that button is red, and it has a little plastic shield over the top of it. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally hit that button, and when you hit it, whatever the hot, hot stuff is, if there's anything hot in the bottom, 
falls and could, you know, could splatter. So the newer version of that, and I'm sure whatever brand you have, the newer versions probably had this too, but make sure that they have all of their parts, especially those locking devices, um, you know, to help keep you safe so that pieces and parts don't fall apart when you're pulling out boiling things, hot things, you know, whatever, so that they don't come apart. Um, oh no, Barbara burned her hand taking food out. Oh, and her pot holder, her oven mitt fell off. Yikes. Okay. <clears throat> okay, see, knowing how and having on hand something to put out even a small kitchen fire. I watched a firebomb go off um, in a small employee kitchen one time because they were burning popcorn. So they had, they had put oil, obviously oil and corn kernels in a pan and um, it got away from them and it made a little fire. And instead of just putting the lid on, back on, and putting this fire out, they threw water on it. And I don't know if you know this or not, but you need to know this. Oil and water don't mix. And literally went from a little bit of burning popcorn kernels to it went whoosh, And like it scorched the ceiling of the little kitchen that they were in. My brother says that's the exact same thing that happens if you use one of those turkey fryer things, you know, where you put where you put the entire turkey in there. He said if you um, if it's frozen, if the turkey's still frozen, those ice crystals that are in the turkey that can cause the, that explosion. Or if it's wet, that that can cause the explosion. Um, Debbie says remember to open the instant pot um, with a lid away from you so that the steam does not come up directly in your face. Okay, also, everyone thinks of hot grease, boiling water, they, you know, uh, hot handles, um, oven mitts falling off when you're trying to reach into the oven. People think of that as the only way to burn yourself in the kitchen. But I tell people this all the time. Um, oh, that's a, that's good, yeah, Trish. I'll check that out. Trish says, Chef Gregory Zaxrian, I'm not saying that correctly, from the kitchen that sells very safe vegetable cutters on QVC. I'll have to check that out. Um, but I remind, I just reminded a friend of this this week and she did not follow my advice, but luckily she was okay. Um, so everybody's thinking of hot grease, hot water, steam, reaching in, getting things out of the oven, you know, when they're still hot, hot handles, things like that. But hot peppers or capsaicin, that, those burns can be just as painful or irritating. So the best practices, if you're going to cut jalapenos, um, ghost peppers for sure, you know, depending on the heat elevation, you know, um, po even poblanos, those are pretty mild, but still some people's skin is irritated with that. But the best practice is to either is to wear gloves when you're cutting them, wash the area thoroughly when you're done. So don't leave any of that, cas I'm not going to say it correctly, capsation juice. Don't leave any of that hot pepper juice or the seeds in your work area. And above all else, do not touch your eyes or your nose. So don't touch if you got it on your hands, even if you have the gloves on, then don't reach up, you know, and touch your eyes or your face. Don't touch your child's eyes or their face and don't touch your dog or cat's eyes or their face. Okay. So that's another, that's safety tip number three. Um, that's another way to keep from burning yourself because people don't think about that, you know, with hot peppers. Um, so this friend, she was given, she was gifted a hot pepper, a jalapeno from one of her students and she didn't think about it. She just started cutting into it. Carol Lou, exactly right. Don't go to the bathroom either. So if you've been cutting hot peppers, if you've been cutting something hot like that, wash your hands or take off those gloves before you go to the bathroom. That's exactly right. So yeah, we won't go into more graphic detail than that, but Carol is exactly, she's exactly right. Okay. Some kitchen tools just don't seem dangerous, right? You know, some of them you think, oh, that's, mm -mm, that's innocuous. That's so not dangerous. And that's, you know, it's nothing to worry about. But every year, emergency rooms and urgent care clinics see injuries from such simple things as a cheese grater. Just a simple cheese grater. And I did not have one here at home to show you. But, you know, just a, just a cheese grater, you know. I won't go into graphic detail, but you can just imagine, you know, grating cheese, grating vegetables, shredding um, zucchini, you know, something like that. Box graters. Even a citrus zester. That... I am just barely, barely touching this, and I can feel that, I mean, that would shred your skin if you got on there, you know, if you were going to town on that. So citrus um, zesters, box graters, citrus zesters, they don't seem dangerous, but they can be. Um, kebab skewers, so like those long metal shish kebab skewers, apparently those things can be 
Uh, I don't want to get anybody upset who I said it was okay to come back in. Not good. <clears throat> so never hold. That's all I'm going to say. Never hold what you're skewering like this. Maybe set it down, run it through like that. Just be extra careful with it. Um, believe it or not, under pressure whipped cream dispensers. I don't even know what that is. Does anybody have an under pressure whipped cream dispenser? Like, is that something that you can buy? So uh, apparently, I don't know, apparently you can buy those now and make your own whipped cream and it's 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 under pressure somehow. Apparently there are have been many, many, many uh, visits to the ER this year, maybe it was last year, whatever, recently, for under pressure whipped cream dispensers. Don't even know what happens, but yeah, apparently that's a thing. Um, hand blenders. So, you know, a hand blender or a hand mixer, you know, these don't seem, that doesn't seem dangerous. Look how little those are. But can you imagine if you were mixing something, you know, in a hand blender and, you know, stuck your hand in there or something? Um, I can tell you from personal experience, an apple corer. So apple corers, I don't hold the apple in my hand. I use these all the time. I always set the apple down and I stick it in this way and go down and I let it hit my countertop or my cutting board or something else. That is a sharp, <coughs> sharp, sharp little serrated blade right there. So an ap apple core doesn't seem dangerous, but these puppies, you know, they, they kind of are. And the last, um, in safety tip number four, the last doesn't seem dangerous thing that you could use in the kitchen is bare feet. Yes, I said it, bare feet. That is one of the most dangerous things that you can use in the kitchen is bare feet. Because think about it, if you spill a little water, slip and fall. If you drop something from the top of the stove, onto your bare feet. If you drop something heavy, if you drop a jar, my mom broke her toe um, one time with just a can. She just she was just moving a can from one, just a, a can of vegetables or something from one spot to the other, dropped it on her toe, broke her toe. Um, so bare feet, that is one of the seems like it's safe, you know, things to do. Not safe at all. Okay, and safety tip number five, improper use of or just flat out not using the safety equipment that came with the tool or using the brains that God gave you is a recipe for disaster before you could even get the meal to the table, okay? I am preaching to myself before any of you get your panties in a wad, all right? So I don't want you to think I'm belittling you or saying that you're not using the brains that God gave you, but I obviously didn't, did not. Yeah, and Carol Lou says cross contamination is another safety hazard. Oh, that's that was a whole that was a whole long journey that I could have taken us on tonight, um, but we only had the one hour. Um, but I am talking to myself too because um, yeah, because I didn't use the brains that God gave me even after my friends who love me very much had a long discussion with me. Okay, so things like oven mitts. You saw me use oven mitt, pot holder, things like that for moving hot things. This is hot. This is still very hot. This has been cooling off for a little while now, but this is still very hot. So things like things like oven mitts, use them. The silicone, those little silicone things that you stick your um, hand in. Oh, Sandra's the barefoot queen. And see, okay, like Debbie has had to tiptoe out of the kitchen several times around broken glass to go get her shoes to clean it up. Lacerations on bare feet was another was another big one for going to the emergency room. Okay, veggie and fruit holders. So <clears throat> some of the appliances that I just talked about, like the mandolin, came with these little holders that see those little things that poked out. You stick that into the vegetable or fruit, whatever it is that you're slicing, and you put that put that in there and that holds it. And look how far away my fingers are. Look how far away my fingers would have been from the mandolin you know, slicing, had I used this little thing. Um, there's also one of these that works in the spiralizer um, to hold the vegetables so that you don't spiralize the tips of your fingers. Um, yeah, so veggie or fruit holders, use them. They come with it. They all come with it, so use them. Um, for your blender or your Vitam Vitamix, this poker thing, what is this called? So this came with my mom's Vitamix mixer, her Vitamix blender, and it says, all it says is caution, cover must be in place 
but you use this to cram things down in there instead of your fingertips. Like, um, who was it that, who was it that used their fingertips? Anyway, it's back in my notes. But I, what is this thing even called? But this came with Herbotomix Blender and you use this to gently push things down in there to get them down to where the blades are. So things like this, not your hands, okay? Your hands are not for this. Even, I'm gonna even say metal, forks and spoons, even, I mean, wooden ones. If you've got a wooden one stuck in there, it's you're just gonna end up with splinters in your food. So, you know, use the tools that came with them. Cut resistant gloves. <clears throat> okay, these are the gloves that came with the mandolin slicer that I was instructed on. These are the gloves that have never been on a hand. Notice that the tag is still on there. So, a tamper, is that what that's called, Marlene? So, this is maybe, Marlene says maybe this is called a tamper, maybe. Use it. Whatever it's called, the sticky sticker thing, use it. Sanders says maybe a plunger. But these are the gloves that came with the mandolin. Yeah, Kathy says it's a poker thing. Um, but these are the gloves that came with the mandolin. These are cut resistant gloves. So these are similar to gloves that like a fishmonger would wear. Now theirs is a little bit more like chain mail, but um, this would have really, really come in handy the day that I was using the mandolin had I been using them. So between this and this, keeping my fingers off of that, I would have been able to enjoy the ratatouille, which I ended up throwing away because I did not make it back to it for like over a week. <coughs> so things like that, cut resistant gloves. Also, things like instruction manuals. So if you notice, this instruction manual for the mandolin slicer has a picture of the gloves. It has a picture of the thing that holds the vegetables. It also talks about that in the instructions, talks about all the little safety things. So instruction manuals, that's another great thing to use. Those are another, those, that's another great tool to use before you ever break into this. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is plugs. So I used to teach a thing called lockout tag out um, when I was teaching people how to use equipment, repair equipment, use equipment, things like that. And lockout tag out, tag out simply means that on some pieces of equipment, and we're talking about kitchen equipment here, that they could not be worked on. You could not disassemble them. You could not take them apart. You couldn't do anything to them until someone had locked it out, had locked out the power. And, oh yeah, and Phyllis has a crazy fear of a, her garbage disposal. That's not crazy. You should be afraid of it. Um, but until the until they, somebody had locked out the power and that there was a tag hanging on it that the power had been locked out. So before you wash anything that has a blade and power, so like a food processor or a mixer, or a blender, or an immersion blend, an immersion blender, um, you know, like this. So, or, so this is an immersion blender. Before you use something like that, these people are really tempted to go ahead and leave them plugged up, and then turn them on and and to try and clean them. Those are spinning blades right there. So before you um, before you wash anything that has a blade, and I consider these to be blades, <clears throat> and is attached to power. Think about the immersion blender. Think about a blender blender, a regular blender, a stand mixer, whatever. Unplug it before you wash it, okay? Um, it's just easy. It's, it's easy. Unplug it. So, um, yeah, before you go ahead and wash it. So, that's it for tonight. Um, I hope that those of you who have been wandering around in bare feet will have your shoes on from now on. I hope that you all will unplug your appliances before you wash them. Um, I hope you found something helpful in this. I will for sure, before I try the mandolin slicer again next time, be using the veggie holder and the gloves. I'll be using both of these. Um, don't want any more injuries like that, but I hope you all had a great chat. I'm gonna go over here and try this taco soup. I'm gonna carefully open it away from my face so that the steam does not get me more of my kitchen safety. Um, I'll be using my oven mitt and my glove to go ahead and get it open. So we'll be safe, safe, safe. And I have on my shoes in case I knock it over. But I hope you all enjoyed this chat. Um, we are going to, we are um, recording on the Mevo camera just in case um, this doesn't work for YouTube, but it's just youtube.com and um, then search for if you have an egg. And if you are watching this on YouTube, please let that next video go ahead and roll over. And I hope you will subscribe and click that little bell so that you'll know when our next video comes out. But you all have a great evening. I've enjoyed it always. And I'm looking forward to next week making something yummy for you. So good night, everyone. And I'll see you next time. Good night.